Today I'm sharing with you how we made a layers of the earth cake for our homeschool unit about the earth and layers of the earth and all sorts of earth sciences. I'm going to share with you at the end of the video some of the really important lessons and tips that I end up teaching with my kids when we do projects like this. So stay tuned for the end for those tips. And before we get started, please keep in mind that this isn't something that I'm looking to have on Instagram or Pinterest worthy. It's something that I'm doing with my kids as an educational learning fun activity. So if you see lots of mistakes and it doesn't look pretty, I have a method to my madness. So here we're going to make this layers of the earth cake. You can use different frosting for yours. We went ahead and just used the kind that was real goopy and fun to work with because the kids thought it looked like the, the waves of the ocean that are getting blown around. That's what, that's what they used and enjoyed making it that way. Let's talk about the things we're going to need. You're going to need two different cake mixes, a yellow cake and a red velvet cake. Next, you're going to need food coloring. You can buy some or if you want to make your own, make your own food coloring. You'll also need something to make the yellow cake in. We use these two pans, but you, this one doesn't matter quite as much as far as what kind of pan you use. You're just going to make the yellow cake because you're going to use it for some of the interior. And the next thing you'll need is this sports ball pan set. I have found them at garage sales and thrift stores, but if you can't find one when you need one, I'll link one in Amazon down in the description box below. And the next thing you're going to need is icing. We got a bunch of white icing and just used our food coloring. You could make it homemade or you could buy your own different colors from the store. It's totally up to you on this one. All right, first up, you're going to make your yellow cake. And there's only one thing that we do to change this up. And that is we add some orange food coloring or red, whichever one, to make it a little bit more, I think that might have been yellow even. We're trying to make it a little more orangey to really show those different layers of the cake. Once you've got that cooking, you're going to get out your ball pan and you're going to start making your red velvet cake. This one you make exactly the way it shows. Because it's a little bit thicker on the ball, you'll want to make sure that you're testing it to make sure that it's cooked all the way through when you are cooking it. And we put it on a baking sheet when we're cooking it so there's no mess because it's kind of a, you know, narrow base on the cake pan there. When your yellow cake is cooled and out of the oven and all that, you're going to scoop out some of this and you're going to make kind of like what you do when you make cake pops. If you've ever made cake pops, you take some icing and you mix it in with and crumble it all up, crumble up that bit of cake until and mix it with some icing until it's kind of like a interior of a cake pop, kind of like a Play-Doh consistency or however you like your cake pops. Next, take out your red velvet and let them cool. And then on one of them, you're going to slice part of the bottom off so that it stays upright and it will sit on its on the bottom of the cake. So you're going to cut a slice off the very bottom so it will sit steady. Next, on both of your cakes, you'll see it's kind of domed up where it, where it cooked. You're going to slice that to make it flat. So you'll slice it straight across and make it flat. Next, you're going to scoop out a good portion of the center on both sides of that and take your interior kind of cake pop mixture and press it into the center of your cake. So that's getting another one of those layers in there. Then you're going to do the same thing for the other side, only we had a problem this time. When we were doing it, we got a crack, a crevice in our cake. And so we had a problem solved and the kids decided they wanted to make some magma to fill that hole. So they mixed up some icing with some more orange food coloring and made some magma that was coming up from the center of the earth and used that to repair the, the crack that happened in our cake. Then you're going to take some more of your yellow cake and you can either mix it up like cake pop again or just take some of the cake and kind of squish it together to make the center center of the earth's core. Put it right there in the middle and then you're going to make sure everything's kind of laying flat. My kids chose to use white icing. I let them make that decision for the glue to put them together. And then they went to town. We had to talk about how much water versus land goes on the planet. And they found some little fishy sprinkles in the pantry, which I didn't remember us having, and decided to sprinkle fishies all over the earth as well. So this is our end result. And we're going to cut right through it to see how it looks. Again, they really enjoyed 
putting the icing on and making it all windy. So it was more of a a painting experimental thing as they were spreading it and blowing the wind around. So it, this one is a little messy. <laughs> so we cut it open and let's take a look at our finished product. Gooey, gooey, lots of water and wind. And here's our finished product. We've got our three layers. We've got some magma from our crack that happened. Yeah, lots of fun, lots of lessons learned. The thing I wanted to impart to you as a parent, grandparent, teacher is to take a deep breath, big deep breath, and let them do it because that's where the learning happens. The learning is going to happen with them doing the activity. And when we did this, my kids were a bit younger and I had to really take a step back and allow them to make mistakes and allow them to feel that, not panic, but that like, oh no, I messed up, now what? Because that's where the learning happens. The learning doesn't happen when it's all beautiful and pretty, but when you let them make the mixture, when you let them cook it, take it out, and yeah, of course you stop them if they're reaching in with bare hands, but let them experience all of those pieces because that's a huge part of it. One, you know, we're learning cooking, we're learning measuring, we're problem solving, they're reading the packages. When that, when the cake cracked, they, at first my kids were like, oh my gosh, we ruined it. I'm like, but did we? You know, and that's a moment where they can start saying, well, hang on a minute, there are cracks in the earth and da 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 and then they start having fun with it. So teaching them to pivot when there's a problem is a huge, huge benefit to doing activities like this. And believe me, we all would love to have these Instagram worthy, beautiful cakes that you can post on Facebook and have your friends ooh and all ah over. But truly, when you get down to the nitty gritty of it, like what are you trying to accomplish here? And that is one, the memories with the kids and all of those things they're going to learn, creating, building, taking chances, problem solving. There's so many things that go into activities like this when you take the hands off the wheel and let the kids try steering for a little bit because that's how they're going to learn, grow, get confidence, and be amazing problem solvers in other areas of their life. I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you try this and I will see you on the next video. Bye.